Welcome to Franklin Baptist Church at Home. It is so good that you can join us today. Hey, last week we finished off talking about Nehemiah and this call to both prayer and to action. And there was a sense of calling us as a people of God to prayer once again. Prayer for our nation, prayer for our neighbours, prayer for our situation and what God is calling us to. So we are going to continue in the story of Nehemiah later on. And Pastor Steve is going to talk through that whole, whole time when Nehemiah went back to Jerusalem to begin to rebuild the wall. My prayer is that today we would continue to be open to all that God wants to say to us. So let's pray now. Holy Spirit, we recognize that your presence is here with us wherever we are gathered, in our homes or with life groups together. Lord, we acknowledge your presence and we say, Lord, would you lead us today? Would you enable us and would you speak to us the things that we need to hear from your word? In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Welcome to Celebrate for the Week. I'm your usual host, Nicole Camacho, but I've got a guest star today, my brother Zachary Camacho, who'll be co-hosting with me. We only got two celebrations for the week, um, and we had no photos. So we thought to do our little um, rendition, our own little version of what might have happened at the moment. So let's get straight to it. The Tuaiti and Makin family are rejoicing in the safe arrival of Sienna Hope. <laughs> 14th of May 2020, a daughter for Grace and Kenneth, a little sister for Ileana and Jordan, and a granddaughter for Tony and Dale. All are doing well, praise and thanks to God. And the second one for the week, we want to celebrate uh, G George and Jean's 46th anniversary, wedding anniversary that is celebrating on the 25th of May. Happy anniversary, dear. Oh. Woo! Now, if you want to share your celebration with the rest of the church, go ahead and email celebrations at fbc.nz by Thursday next week, and you'll be featured in our next video. Have a great week, everyone! Kiara kids, you've been back at school this week. Oh, so nice to be catching up with friends, eh? Hey, I wanted to talk to you today about what the Bible says about you and I. Did you know that we're all just as important as each other? God created us all equal. Yep, male and female equal, child and adult equal. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor, royalty or slave, or what country you're from. We are all important to God. We are all special to God. We are all loved by Him just as much as anyone else. That doesn't mean, though, that we can say to others, I'm important, I'm too important to do that job or that job. Children still need to obey their parents, and even royalty have work to do. But if anybody does look down at you because you're young, if anyone treats you with disrespect, if anyone hurts you, remember it's that person who's making you feel unimportant. It's that person who's making you feel unspecial. It's that person who's making you feel unloved. But a feeling is just a feeling. It's not the truth. It's not the reality of the situation. The truth and the reality is you are important, special and loved by God always will be, no matter what. Now, going back to how we're talking about how we're all equal, God has given each of us different gifts and talents, roles and opportunities. Everybody has something unique to them. Everybody, whether they're male or female, child or adult, rich or poor, royalty or slave, whatever country, we come from, we all have something good we can offer to others. Whether it be in teaching something new, comforting, delighting, whatever, God has asked every single one of us to spread his love and goodness. When we do that and allow that of each other, we are working together in God's plan. So, I am totally expecting you kids to be part of church in every way. 
Eve it up the front. You have a lot to teach us. Even Jesus said so. Remember, everyone's important and equal in God's eyes. Everyone has something good to, to offer others and everyone has a part in God's plan. Welcome church to our worship space for church at home uh, during our service. Um, I've been enjoying reading through Nehemiah, <clears throat> the, the series that we're in at the moment, and the prayer that Nehemiah spoke um, really stood out to me as something really powerful and um, courageous for him to pray. Um, so what I'm going to do is just read that prayer now. Um, and if you want to, you can translate that into our context today uh, for Franklin Baptist Church um, in 2020. Um, so yeah, so when you hear um, people Israel, you can substitute that for uh, people of Franklin Baptist Church. And for your servant Moses, you can um, replace with your son Jesus. And the eyes can, can be personal for you, for where you're at. Um, so reading from Nehemiah uh, chapter 1 verse 5. O Lord God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps covenant and steadfast love with those who love him and keep his commands, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer of your servant that I now pray before you day and night for the people of Israel, your servants confessing the sins of the people of Israel, which we have sinned against you. Even I and my father's house have sinned. We have acted very corruptly against you and have not kept the commandments, the statutes and the rules that you commanded your servant Moses. And down to verse 9, But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though your outcasts are in the uttermost parts of heaven, from there I will gather them, and bring them to the place that I have chosen to make my name dwell there. They are your servants and your people whom you have redeemed by your great power and by your strong hand. Amen. Um, so we're going to enter into worship from that place, aware of where we're at. Um, worship is always a choice. Uh, just like Nehemiah chose to uh, repent and pray for himself and his nation, uh, worship is a choice too. So uh, we encourage you as we uh, worship with this new song, Yes I Will, um, let that be more than just uh, worship, but being attentive to the commands and the words of um, his son, Jesus. Uh, let's worship. Yes, I will lift you high in the Lord. 
Kim and Epso, Bang Po Aon, Ting or Kne. We are Kevin and Jillian Bird. We have two adult children and six grandchildren. We joined Wycliffe Bible Translators in 2010 and went out to Cambodia in 2014, where we still currently work. I work for a local NGO called Malaprase Organization. They work with young people and children leaving orphanages, whether that's to be reintegrated with their families or if they've aged out. We also work with their families, the communities, and the government agencies to support um, to support the young people. All right, now I want to tell you about our big goal for what we're doing in Cambodia. We want to ensure that each Cambodian person has personal access and can receive the scriptures in language that they understand. So if these represent our wonderful resources, the Bible and other Christian resources, what's the barriers, what things get in the way of receiving those wonderful blessings? The first thing is awareness. If, they, if this person has no idea that these wonderful resources exist, then they're of no benefit to them at all. But often they will want these resources. But the next issue is poverty. If they cannot afford to buy those resources or they don't think they're more important than Sunday night's food, they won't buy those resources and people won't necessarily know that they're even there to, to give them those resources. Now, they also have issues around literacy, where one in four Cambodians cannot read or write at all. And actually, functional literacy is really low. So even, even if they can read, reading the Bible is, is really hard. And then we have issues around distance and travel. Because three out of four Cambodian people are rural people, they uh, have to travel long distances and long time on rough roads, and they're already busy people working hand to mouth. So they have trouble accessing uh, the, the scriptures and getting to church and things like that. And then this, uh, uh, which Follow, follows on from that, the discipleship is an issue because of the distance and the travel and the money. Uh, actually, having support for new Christians or, or even growing Christians is quite quite low. And then <laughs> you have language difficulties. Where a lot of the Christian resources and there's plenty in New Zealand in the English language, but not so many in Khmer. So that limits what they can do. And then there's issues around education and knowledge. You know, many Cambodians, particularly rural Cambodians, only have three years uh, education, primary education. It doesn't get you very far. And you don't learn about how to use fancy modern devices that can really help you a lot. Uh, and so they're frightened of the technology. And then, of course, like most uh, different countries, they have different cultures and religious uh, practices and thoughts and that can complicate matters as well. So any and all of these things can work against these lovely Cambodian people having that personal access to the scriptures. So we want to try and break down these sorts of barriers and bring these, these two together. We hope that you can join us in terms of prayer or, or financial support. And uh, our email address will be just down, down the bottom here for you to um, maybe uh, get in touch. Look forward to hearing from you. Bye-bye. So I'd like to invite you to pause and to pray with me for Kevin and Gillian and their work in Cambodia. We're also going to pray for a couple of churches that we're journeying together with. Um, firstly, Simon from Life Point Church up north at One Tree Point, Bream Bay. He has expressed that in their small community, the LVL plant, the laminated beams factory, unfortunately 160 people are going to be losing their jobs. And not related to the COVID-19 situation, but the local oil refinery up there are looking at stopping altogether and becoming a transfer, transfer depot. And if that happens, it means that several hundred more people may lose their jobs. So they would ask us to pray for them this week. 
Also, Pastor Robin Mellis-Smith from Eastview Baptist Church in Pakuranga would love prayer that we take lessons that we have learned during lockdown, as well as what we're learning while we study Nehemiah and choose to follow Jesus more closely in the coming months, whatever that may look like. So please join us in prayer for this time, uh, both for Kevin and Gillian, for LifePoint Church and for Eastview Baptist in Pakaranga. So we're going to continue in worship um, to sing Build My Life, which is an adoration song. It's a chance to, um, if you want, lift up your hands, lift up your voice, lift up your posture and give him glory. Or alternatively, to humbly submit um, to who he is. Let's worship.
Today's reading is from Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 8 to 20. The king granted me what I asked because the gracious hand of the Lord was on me. So I went to the governors of Trans-Euphrates and gave them the king's letters. The king had also sent army officers and cavalry with me. When Sanballat the Horonite and Tobiah the Ammonite official heard about this, they were very much disturbed that someone had come to promote the welfare of the Israelites. I went to Jerusalem, and after staying there three days, I set out during the night with a few others. I had not told anyone what my God had put in my heart to do for Jerusalem. There were no mounts with me except the one I was riding on. By night, I went out through the valley gate toward the Jackal Well and the Dung Gate examining the walls of Jerusalem, which had been broken down, and its gates, which had been destroyed by fire. Then I moved on toward the fountain gate and the king's pool, but there was not enough room for my mount to get through. So I went up the valley by night, examining the wall. Finally, I turned back and re-entered through the valley gate. The officials did not know where I had gone or what I was doing, because as yet I had said nothing to the Jews or the priests or nobles or officials or any others who would be doing the work. Then I said to them, You see the trouble we are in? Jerusalem lies in ruins and its gates have been burned with fire. Come! Let us rebuild the wall of Jerusalem, and we will no longer be in disgrace. I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me, and what the king had said to me. They replied, Let us start rebu rebuilding. So they began this good work. When Sanballat the Horonite, Tobiah the Ammonite official, and Geshem the Arab heard about it, they mocked and ridiculed us. What is this you are doing? they asked. Are you rebelling against the king? I answered them by saying, The God of heaven will give us success. We, his servants, will start, his, start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem, or any claim, or historic right to it. Today we're going to be talking about seeking God's purposes for our lives. You know, today we're going to be continuing in our series from Nehemiah. I just love this book as it reminds us of the God who not only calls us into his purposes, but also provides what we need as together we grow his kingdom in the situation that he's placed us in. In 2010, I was pastoring at Dargaville Baptist Church when I preached through the whole book of Nehemiah. It was such an influential message for us as we were at the stage of building a new church. And it seemed that every time I opened these chapters, God used it to speak directly into what we needed for that time. I believe it's the same for us today at Franklin Baptist Church in our current situation. You know, Nehemiah was moved to respond to God's call. And God responded with his provision. I just love the verse in Chapter 2, verse 8, where we're told by Nehemiah, and the king granted these requests. Well, those requests, of course, was for God's provision. But God had granted, the king granted those requests because he says, the gracious hand of God was on me. You know, this is God's response to our faith. The gracious hand of God is on us. When we step out in faith, and when God assigns you or I to follow him and to serve him in order that his kingdom might grow, then by faith, we can step into his purposes with confidence that he is directing our paths and that his gracious hand will also be on those things that we put our hands to. You know, God is at work in our world today to see that his plans and his purposes are being done. And then he asks us to partner with him. And he promises that he will be with us so that God's kingdom will come on earth as it is in heaven. I love a statement by Rick Warren in his book, The Purpose Driven Church, where he writes this. It's no good us working towards our vision and then asking God to bless it. What we should do is to discover what is God's vision, make it our vision 
and then work with him to bring about the blessing. Isn't that amazing? That the sovereign God who created the heavens and the earth and everything that is in it will ask Nehemiah 